Hello and welcome to a little unboxing video. Uh, I've never done one of those and uh, I would love to because I have bought myself two lovely things. Uh, one at the store and one I ordered myself and they basically both arrived today. And these are these two little beauties here. One, the woman called Fujiko Mine, or a woman called Fujiko Mine, the TV series, and motherfuckers. Um, I forgot what the English uh, name is because, of course, it's a swear. They censored it. I think it's just called MKFZ. So these two arrived, two lovely limited collector's Blu-ray editions. And this one is French and this one is German. I think, I don't know, most people know that I am from Germany, but I also speak French. Um, and of course, I take advantage of that, meaning that I buy myself whatever edition in language I find lovely. And so I've ended up with these uh, two beauties here. Um Fujikumine, I really loved and wanted to own myself. And motherfuckers, I saw in uh, an Akiba Pass festival. Uh, last year, uh, and was immensely smitten by it. Uh, one is a TV series, a very Jose tinged, I would say, um, in the Lupin III uh, franchise, and the other one is a French uh, Japanese co production by Studio 4C, and uh, it's based on a French graphic novel or comic book. So uh, I would love to unbox these two because um, they're both collector's editions and they come with very lovely stuff. This is what they look like. And we're gonna unbox those because uh, I know that I ordered them or saw them and wanted to own them. Um, but I also don't remember what's in them. And I would love to see because I'm very excited. And also because one of my credos in life is if you like something, you should support it. And I love both of these. Support it is. So I would love to open one of these. Which one do we take? Um, let's perhaps go with the more unusual one. That being motherfuckers. Fujiko, you're coming over here. So what does it say? It says limited edition. Uh, rated 16 um, and there it says it has a bonus trailer bonus video a bandana a soundtrack art book digital comic um, volume one so I don't know how the uh, digital comic will be on there maybe USB key the download code whatever but what I'm really looking forward to is the soundtrack which is by what's the name he's there the toxic Avenger uh, and the art book because the art of this film was magnificent. It is a very surreal romp uh, through a dystopian big city, so very urban in design, like very dirty, back rows, uh, suburbia, just really just overrun with gangsters, yakuza, and mafia, and everything. So fantastic design by everyone. Um, and as I said, I've never done one of those, so I will professionally take a steak knife to open uh, all of these. Of course, I'm going to be careful. I don't want to break anything. I think I'm going to give whiplash to any professional unboxing person. Oh, there we go. Steak knife has done its purpose. None its purpose. English, yes. Good. So, I'll leave that. This is... Okay, this is just sticky on. Oh, okay. Now we can take this off. Just gonna glue this to the table. And we have there we see it's by Peppermint and Ankama Animation. Then I think it opens. Let's see here. Hello. There is our banana. DMC. What did it stand for? Not, not even my cry, but um, uh, what's the name of the city? Oh, yeah, lovely bandana. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, look at this in art book. Here we have 
looks like the soundtrack. Okay, we have one of these beautiful backgrounds um, of the city. Okay, so here we have Dushi, original motion picture soundtrack, as well as... Okay, there is the comic. So the comic of uh, Dark Meat City. There we go. Um, so we have a comic book and... Oh, it's cool, it's like a, a sewer... Um, the manhole. <laughs> Funny English words. So it's like this and of course, yeah. This looks amazing. This is the cover. Or is it the film poster? There it is, Agaba Pass Festival 2018, where I saw it. This film was in production for quite a long time because I was very, very excited to see it come out in Germany because I had seen the French trailer for it looming around for many, many years. I think, whew, I don't know, don't, don't let me tell you any lies, but it must have been like 2013, 14, 12 maybe even. But yeah, this, this was like a dream come true. Like, uh, not not like a Duke Nukem Forever, but uh, yeah, like, I never thought I would see this. And then I did, and it was fantastic. Here we have some of these cool shots of the Mafia. has like very... it has wrestlers in it too. It's like a very big beefy man who punched stuff. Um, yeah, basically our protagonist gets overrun by a boss and suddenly awakens some supernatural power and then sees, oh god, there are people behind me who want to kill me now because of that. And of course we have a cast of colorful characters who come into it. There is uh, one of our wrestling guys. <laughs> Literal tiger mask. Um, yeah. Evil Overlord. There are the others. The Luchador guys. The Mafia coming in. Caput Dogo. And our two protagonists. Um, Flaming Skull Man and Black Stick Figure Man. Yeah, so this was a really, really rad film that I would recommend watching for anybody. If you like a real surreal, out there films that really do something unique, then this is one for you. I saw an English trailer, I think it came out a little bit late in in, uh, in English, and I think it, well, it is still in, in the progress of coming out, but it had like a, a very stellar English voice cast, I heard. Also, um, original French is on here, and the German dub, which I haven't seen yet. The um, I saw it in the French dub, which was absolutely excellent, um, with German subtitles. And this is... Just black. Yep. See? Ooh, mysterious. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, especially to the, the German dub uh, as well. Does this have like a flip one? It has. So you will always see these ratings, which have to be displayed on the main page, but sadly um, they tend to like destroy the aesthetics. So very often, I guess other countries have them maybe too, but I've only seen in Germany so far. They have like a change cover that you can flip around if you don't want to see the age rating anymore. Because you have seen it, it's there, but once you have bought it, it doesn't have to be displayed anymore. You can do with it whatever you want. So there we go. Fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to watching this soon ish. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow is a good day. So, really cool soundtrack on the film. And let's take a little look at the art book. What does it tell us? There's our cover again. Never before published first sketches by Shoji Renishimi um, after the comic of Run. Ooh, love those. Mm, these are red. Very really cool watercolor pencil sketches. Let's see what it says here. Uh, now, in the beginning, the universe of Motherfuckers wasn't quite clear to Nishimi san, uh, and it took several weeks and several sketches for him to understand and grasp this world. Okay, so this is cool. Yeah, as this was a multinational uh, film, there's probably a lot of um, talking back and forth uh, to be because of like cultural differences, maybe language barriers that have to be crossed. 
What do we see here? Oh, okay. Um, the very cool, uh, which I loved in the film, um, chase sequence uh, should have been in an Austin Mini. Uh, I think it would be this car. Um, but it was changed to an uh, ice cream truck because it w was a lot funnier. And it because, in, in, this is something I noticed, it made an interaction with the soundtrack. Um, if you see this scene, the scene with the ice cream truck, they're using this very high-speed um, fleeing sequence. The like chiming bells that you get in an ice cream truck just go inside these this Toxic Avenger like dark, dark synth um, soundtrack. So it, it flows into each other like very very nicely. Uh, what does it say over here? Nishimi-san really liked the designs of Luna from the spin-off Metamuta um, by Jeremy Lapsulu, um, so that he was inspired for some storyboard sketches. So this must be been for the um, spin-off from Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers has been uh, a comic that had been around for quite a while. I think it came out in like early 2000s. Some scenes from the comic, new interpreted by Nishimi-san. Oh wow, I love these. These look cool. Those are great. Oh yeah, some cool character design. Oh yeah, I love those, like the um, sort of sort of stormtrooper guys. Like the big masks. Mafia guys. Coming in. The Luchadors! Yeah, they are cool. Oh yeah, this, this is the apartment of our two protagonists. A very run down. And the moon. Very ominous. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. It's basically not sketches um, from the film, but um, different just cultural back and forth sketches between creators. It's lovely. It's a nice idea. And the last one is the bandana. Let's take a look over here. Where is this? Open. Uh, steak knife it is. I don't know what there is. No, it isn't. Oh, okay. Wait, sorry. Did I mention I'm also like half from Argentina? Basically, steak knives are important. Ooh, Ooh it's big. Very big. You can see with the little Kalashnikovs on there. Let's take a look. Ooh, can't even probably show all this, but this is big. I like this. Oh, it says even what the fuck is in the middle there. Lovely. Could uh, put that on a table. Make it a nice little, uh, nice little coffee cloth to to put your tea on. That's nice. Lovely. So yeah, but I think the the highlights of this box are certainly film and soundtrack. Um, which I'm really loving. So for, you can probably get into a little bit of, of European anime culture here as well. Germany is famous for being overpriced in uh, its anime. At least I feel that if I um, compare that to our lovely European neighbours, um, preferably uh, the UK and France. Um, basically this limited edition with uh, everything in it, so far, it, I mean, it came out yesterday, literally, um, costs 50 euros. I think 50 for a box like this is... So... Okay, I think 40 would have been nicer. But yeah, uh, let's just say um, if you want to buy anime in Germany... Uh, Either be prepared for having a black hole in your wallet, or don't. Or just, like me, find other ways to either just support what you really, really love, or support other countries, the languages that you speak. Because, for example, I wanted to buy the newly um, released, and uh, also the new that came out, 
Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Why? Because Legend of the Galactic Heroes, as it is, is very ingrained in a German, Austrian, basically all of European uh, culture, especially with their names um, that are traditionally German. Um, yeah, or, for example, are based on like real German regions, like Rheinhessen, for example, that's just uh, not that far away from here. Or Lohengrin, that is from... Um, Wagner's Ring. So uh, I would have loved to sing because we don't have a release of the old OVA. So I wanted to take a look at the German um, newly localized uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes that came out last year, 2018. And I wanted to buy it and turns out it was split into three volumes. Uh, and volumes, meaning you get a DVD or Blu-ray with four episodes on it, and they slap 40 euros on it, and boom, there you go. So in the end, you will pay for 12 episode anime series, 120 euros. I, I'm not made of money, you know. I would love to support you all, but I can't. How? how? It doesn't work. So I just do it the way that I support what I really want to, or um, I don't, or uh, run away to other countries. Okay. That was one box. Nifty. And I'm looking forward to watching this. So, let's, let's take a look at... Oh, a good old woman called Fujikumine. I had seen this series um, basically very early in my Lupin um, canon because Lupin the Third is a franchise that has been around for 50 years now and you can get into it from many, many points and angles and there's so much content and I can guarantee you there will be an entry that you love. And this one here, um, Woman Called Fujikomine, which came out in 2013, uh, which was the, was that the 40th anniversary edition? It was an anniversary for something, which uh, had an all-star staff uh, working on it. I think uh, Watanabe as director, um, what's her name, y Yamamoto, um, the lovely woman who directed Yuri on Ice. Uh, and which I'm just so excited about, love it, is the character design by Takeshi Koike, who later would go on to direct two specials, and now a third special has been announced uh, by himself. Takeshi Koike, you may know as the director of Redline, and you can see that already in his the character design. You can see over here, everybody just looks so stylish and clean. And just, Lean, it's good looking. Like all of you look fantastic. Yeah, so uh, this is a, as it says here, a prequel. It's just, it's, it's hard to say it's a prequel. It's basically a reboot. Like this, the whole franchise is reboots and resets itself always, so you can always jump in somewhere. And I would say if you have a grasp on the main cast, you can basically watch whatever you want. And this entry here is like very goes deep into the characters' sexualities, um, their different relationships. Uh, basically, rerolls them because they all meet each other for the first time again, and uh, takes a little bit of a nose dive at the end. The uh, ending is famously a uh, bit of a mess. I myself think it's executive meddling because it doesn't feel like this was the vision for this series. Here's what's everything that is in it. Um, I had seen all of this and went, yeah, I want that. And this is also a um, double release where you basically get everything on Blu-ray and on DVD. So basically one for everyone. And here it says what's in there is one art book, one uh, little booklet, whatever that means, with 28 pages. What I wanted, um, five postcards, because I uh, moved all, uh, into a new apartment, and I can frame postcards, I could probably hang these on my wall, love it. And what I'm also looking forward to, one CD of the OST. 
So this is what we will get here. Uh, we will get oh, we knew that uh, French dub, Japanese one, and of course uh, subtitles. Also, a um, little tidbit of information over here. Lupin, for the longest time, was in France, as this is a French release, was called Edgar de la Cambriole. Um, Cambriole, Cambriole meaning uh, to steal. Like, you could probably translate it as Thief Edgar, Edgar of the Thieves. And I think, this is just me speculating, but... Um, this had to be because the name Lupin in France is copyrighted by, of course, um, the family of the author who wrote the Arsène Lupin novels back in the day, so Lupin the First. And this led to uh, some issues uh, back in the day. For example, when Lupin the Eighth was supposed to come out, which was to be a sci-fi series, um, it was cancelled very early in production because... It was, they wanted it to call it, which it was again a French Japanese co production. They wanted to call it Arsène Lupin and Co. or Lupin the Eighth. And both of them got rejected, or they wanted a prestigious amount of money. So they said, no, what, what's the point of having a Lupin series that we cannot call Lupin? So um, Lupin the Eighth got basically cancelled because of naming issues. And I think this is why it's called Edgar, but. I think recently they probably have cracked down because I have seen not recent releases where it just says Lupin, but also I think for nostalgia reasons and because of recognition and had been localized like that for many years, also said that Edgar de can't be also have yeah, the two names. For example, the um, Lupin Part 4 Blu-ray came out recently uh, in France and that just didn't have the Edgar name on it, so it just said Lupin. So, let me do this. There's our ad book. And let's open this steak knife. I'm going to be careful. I'm, I'm normally very quite careful with my my stuff. You see, I love my editions. I will probably do also a uh, little room tour soon, and basically show you what the little nerd cave looks like. Also, I don't know uh, if you have seen it, but uh, I decided to suit up a little for, for this one. I'm wearing cufflinks, that being my Tetris cufflinks that I love really about. There's an L-shaped block, and there's a T-shaped block. Lovely. Um, there she is, the woman called Fujiko Mine. Oh, I love her. Say, so, okay, uh, okay, this probably peels off as well. Does it? No, it doesn't. Let's, let's, let's just leave it there. Uh, and also what I see here is the sigil, there, which um, plays a role in the film, for called Fräulein Eule. Um, and there is your, your German info for today. Fräulein Eule means Mrs. Owl. It's for basically from the word Frau, meaning woman or lady. And Lein, which is the like little suffix that comes in it, Fräulein, meaning small woman, or Fräulein, an unmarried woman, and Eule being an owl. So, Mrs. or Lady Owl. Here's a little owl. Good. Let's see, what do we have here? Ooh. We have Fujiko Jigen. Okay, so let's put this in. Ooh. This is our little art book collection. Love the artwork. Oh. Takeshi Koike is just so good, this man. Yeah, cool. This is the next uh, animation direction, Takeshi Koike. Yeah, he also did animation direction, that is true. Let's put this over here for now. And I think this probably unfolds. It does. Ooh, it does. Here we go, focus a little. Fujiko, we got a growing one over there. Oscar. Let's turn this around. And then he got a little Let's see if this opens. It does. Let's get a little away from the camera. And we got all of them. Cool. Nice, nice. And see what it looks like from the inside. There we have the Blu-rays and the DVD. 
And over there, I spot our booklet and the postcards. Let's take a look over here. Put these over here. Yep, these are postcards. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, this um, I had seen this as a cover before, and I also quite kind of think it's a it's a very cool um, better don't know sadness <laughs> reference, Mad reference, bro. And then in the background we have Lupin, Sinigata, Jigen, Goemon flying there. Oh yeah, this is also I've seen that before, which is a very cool key visual. I really like um, here the very cool like Lupin pointing head, uh, gun on the head, and she's pointing back at him. Yeah, the colors are just great. It's a nice print too. Probably frame that and hang that on my wall. Yeah. Then we got a Lupin, very cool, and there we are back again. Nice. Okay, so it's not a postcard really, but just really some tiny prints. But it's a lovely edition. And let's take a look over here at the little booklet. What does it tell us? I think uh, presentation, story, stuff, characters, episodes, the animated series and other adaptations. So basically we get some background info and some more uh, art. And I think I'm going to get demonetized, but I'm not even demonetized. It probably is age content, whatever. That's a red outfit. I think that never even appears in the series. Okay, yeah, there it says. Arsene Lupin III is the grandson of Arsene Lupin. So basically, we get some background info. Fujiko Mine. Very nice. Sinigata. Some shots from the series. Little episode guide. Some more screenshots. So yeah, as you can probably tell, like this series is just visually mm. Mm. beautiful. So it, I wouldn't miss this series, even if it is a hot mess in the end. Just the aesthetics and everything, it's just worth it. Okay, so it says here, um, green jacket um, series, or oh, just red jacket, um, pink jacket. And yeah, it basically gives you some uh, background info. Um, then a woman called Fujikomine, so it's very cool. Black and white artwork. And more. Nice. Yeah, and other series. Cool. Yeah, so this um, probably is like. We'll read all of those. It's, like, it's always nifty to have. So far, I've had quite a few French releases now, and so far, I think every one of them had like a little information booklet. And I find that quite a nifty addition. It's not much, but um, you can basically read up on it. And very often, people just buy things and, or don't know what they're buying or are too lazy to look something up. Um, so, you're basically just giving them. A little bit of extra info so they they don't stay uninformed which is a very nifty idea but let's take a look at the very cool one. what it did say soundtrack was in here it's probably one of those uh, oh yeah, yeah there it is the original soundtrack here okay there's a little bit sad that it doesn't have like its own box but uh, i'm not going to complain like this box is pretty that's lovely. Let's take a look at the art book. And I'm so looking forward to this. Because Takashi Goike is the man. He absolutely is. Oh, this is hard. It's hard cover. It's also nifty. Take mm, glossy paper. Oh, called Fujiko Ine. Mm, illustrations. Yeah, that that is cool. I didn't see that. Wow, that's nice. You can basically see that Lupin goes all the way on the ears, it's his leg. Cool. Like you can see stuff like this if you just see the line art. Oh man, that man has a clean line art. Just, oof. 
wild on ice. I highly um, recommend also watching Takeshi Koike's films because they're just mm, very, very graphic in violence, just the same. Okay, you can also get like extra. Oh yeah, so you basically get a combination of all of these basically drawn before and then combined into one artwork. Well, this is lovely. Which is the um, OST cover. Cool. More illustrations. Some more. And his style is just so cool. And also fits very, very nicely with Lupin, which is like a very langly but energetic and very powerful style. So these, um, I'm not uh, telling you anything about this because of story reason. I don't want to spoil you on it. Yeah. Good old Jigen and Gorman. Uh, also, um, Takeshi Koike's character design in Fujikomini is different from his own. Um, I find his um, character design in Fujikomini a lot langlier. Like his characters are very uh, a lot thinner, which gives them a certain elegance, but they are a lot um, more like handy and craftier. Don't, don't want to say girthier. <laughs> girthier in, in, in his series. Yeah. One very cool Zinigata. Zinigata is very different in uh, a woman called Fujikomini, more like a, a hard-boiled uh, inspector and less like a, a bumbling a but lovable fool. Um, but I like this because it makes sense uh, in this um, story. Because uh, I like that a woman called Fujikomini breaks the canon so hard that um, the series uh, starts flipping out of it. And that is a very cool concept. We have this again. Lovely. Oh boy, he coming. Oh man. That man just says good line art. So clean. Very cool jean. Nice. A very elegant woman. Very cool. I can probably just look at this for for many hours. Like if you do like line art yourself, I really love uh, like how you can get like thinner and and bigger and just have like a swing uh, and just a uh, lovely um, handprint uh, in your art. Ooh, love the group shot over here of all the men in the series. Oscar, of course, being a new addition, uh, he is just in this series. I think nowhere else, yeah. Cool Jigen over there here. Um, but he serves a purpose. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything about him, but um, it's basically it's it's good that he's here. He adds something. Yeah. He's been Fujiko. Okay, so these are the pure line words of the thing earlier. Man, these are cool. Look at these. I think this is just gonna be <laughs> me. Look, look how cool this is. Yeah, when those cast design is, is nice too. It's always difficult to introduce like, new characters into an already set cast. But I think this one uh, does it well. Oh boy, we got some hands, some lingerie. It isn't even laundry, it's just like <laughs> it attaches to nothing, it hides nothing. So yeah, these are cool. Oh, I know these. This is the outfit from the second episode when Fujiko visits a casino. She has like a little um tingle cheating device uh, in her earrings. Okay, so these are I think Sakura community is going to kill me, but I think if I remember with Setai, Setai are um, character sheets for the animators. So basically telling them, okay, this is what the character looks like here, here, and there. These are the details, uh, and this is your reference material. So basically it's a, a sheet you give the animators for them to stay on model. Oh yeah, the, the big bell thing. I remember that. Oh, that was, that's also episode two. 
the key monologue. I should rewatch the test. Oh, this is so cool. Nifty. Okay, black hat Fuji goes nice. Oh, these are cool too. Oh, these, these I remember these. These are this is the maid outfit. She has when she takes care of some millionaire's children. Yeah, this is this is a cool look. Really love this one for her. It's very stylish. Like the hair. Oh, the hair is so cool. Little curls and things. And some eyes over there. Nice. These are those. Those are cool. Yeah. Get some lupin. Some info on his cigarettes and how his cigarette box is. Oh, this looks cool. Some more lupins. Oh yeah, this, these are from the OP. Yeah, it's just the opening. Um, it's very uh, surreal and unique OP. New Withering Heights, it's called. Which is essentially just a very erratic, uh, dramatic um, violin piece. Uh, with Fujiko narrating over it. This is from the ED. And the ending. Also really lovely shots again. And there we have our little key draw again. And oops, lovely shots. Let's go shot. And that's that. That's a lovely edition. It's also cool to have, like especially seeing the like uninked, uh, uncolored um, line work of Takashi Koike and just seeing his inks, that is cool. It's a nifty edition. And um, and now that I've shown everything, um, this on over here just to tell you the difference between German prices and French prices, um, this edition cost me uh, twenty euros. <laughs> Like 30 euros in price difference. Um, I don't know why that is in France. Um, maybe it's because they have a different appreciation for um, comics and animated series in general. So it's basically a bigger market. Um, or what I can also imagine is that they get support from the state because it's a cultural uh, thing and you can... Uh, that can uh, get money from the state because... You say, okay, this is like for educational purposes, it's for culture, it's art, um, so it gets additional funds. Which could also be the case, I don't know, I should probably research that. And yeah, this is cool. And again, um, I really recommend this series. Uh, take, have in mind that this is very uh, uh, hurt in the end and very not canon. But still a very unique and memorable and very aesthetically pleasing entry into the Loop in the Third franchise, which you wouldn't miss. Which is also why I bought it, because um, I wanted to own it. So yeah. This is Fuji Gumina. This motherfuckers. This has been my haul for the day. And also for, I think, quite a while now. I'm very happy to watch both of these because I watched Fujikumine as I think my third or fourth Lupin series and now I've watched so many. I watched all of part four, watched all of part five. I watched a ton of films and specials that I want to take a look at this one again and basically see how it holds up against the others. Um, and basically, which is why I think rewatches are a very important thing. If you see pieces of media in different points in your life, um, your vision and your interpretation of them changes. So always um, be happy to rewatch things in your life. And I think with that I can close, I think. Thank you very much for having been with me, and I hope you enjoyed that. I will probably give you a little house tour once soon. I want to work on some of my own videos as well. And I say thank you for your continued support, your lovely messages, and the love that I get from uh, friends and mutuals every day. 
See you again. See you around. Bye-bye.